Since we are born, we learn to speak, to have conversations with our parents, siblings, and neighbors. It is amazing to see children learning to speak. In the same way they grow tall, their ability to speak grows. When I travel around the world, I see people in little villages have their own languages. People who don't wear any clothes and live in the deep jungles have a language that allows them to communicate with one another. All people learn to speak when they are young and have conversations with their parents, siblings, friends, and neighbors. Spoken words are not only used for having conversations. We can change our fate with our spoken words. In our spoken words, there's creative power that determines our fate. With our words, the work of God, where we may enjoy good health and that all may go well with us, even as our souls are getting along well, takes place. Spoken words have creative power. Destruction and despair can come, so we must use our words well. We converse with one another with spoken words. There are various types of conversations. First, there is a conversation with oneself. This is to look at oneself and speak to oneself. When we speak, we hear ourselves first. When we hear what we say, the brain acknowledges those words as true words and make a preparation according to those words. Although the visible hearable and touchable circumstances are dis desperate. If we speak positive words repeatedly to ourselves with faith, our brain would acknowledge that the positive circumstances are real. If we say, I can do it, it will be done if I try, let me do this, our minds that heard our spoken words will begin to move that way. Our spoken words and hearts are one. Our hearts act according to what they hear. Therefore, no matter how bad our circumstances may be, we must endlessly say to our hearts and souls, I am joyful, I am pleased, I am happy, I have peace, good things will happen. Then, even though the circumstances are bad, our hearts will begin to act by listening to our spoken words that our circumstances will gradually become brighter and clearer and joy will overflow. Spoken words are like seeds that are sowed in the fields called heart. There are words that, are, that our parents sow in our hearts. There are words that our friends sow in our hearts. But what is most important is to sow words by ourselves. Spoken words that we use when we are sitting still or when we are in bed or when we wake up in the morning have great power to change our life. Therefore, we all have a great secret that can change ourselves. Proverbs 6.2 says, If you have been trapped by what you said, ensnared by the words of your mouth, when we wake up in the morning and say, Will I live past 70? then you will die when you're 70. But if you continue to say that I will live until 100, those words will be sowed in your heart and your organs will begin to move with a goal of reaching 100 years old. Don't wait until other people sow good words to you. You can sow good seeds in your hearts. If you say to yourself, you're great, you're wise, you're healthy, great power will manifest. Jesus said, if you can, everything is possible for him who believes. Thus, you should say, I can do this. If you say, I can't do it, I won't be able to do it, I will not, it will not be done then you won't be able to do anything. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do everything through Him who gives me strength. You must say, because God gives me strength, I can do everything. Please repeat after me. I can do it. God loves me. 
I am a precious child of God. God is walking with me. He is blessing me. Even though other people don't speak these words to you, you can speak these words to yourself. If these kinds of words go out of your mouth, those words will work in your circumstances and bear fruit. Thus, don't think of this as embarrassing and say, I can do it. It will be done. I will do it. God loves me. Continue to speak necessary words. Then those words, those words will go out and help you. The things that we say are not useless. They bear fruit. So when you encounter difficulties and hardships, it is good to encourage yourself. If we don't make any mouth confessions and think, Will God really solve this problem? Will He really hear my prayers? Does He really does he love me? Then doubts will continue to come. Therefore, we must stand against doubts with our mouth confessions. We must say, I believe in God. God who is almighty and omnipresent and who loves me will definitely help me. We must speak these words and stand against doubts that continue to enter into our hearts. Thus, even though our circumstances are bad and the future seems pitch black, we must confess happiness with our mouth. Second, we can converse with God with spoken words. It is, it is a tremendous blessing that we can have conversations with God. Those who don't believe in God have no God to speak with. Some people worship idols, but idols can't answer. Back in the old days, there were many people who worshipped idols. Even now, there are many people who worship idols. Try to speak to idols, even though you shout and make requests by fasting. Idols can't answer you. Elijah had a contest with 450 prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. What kind of contest was that? Elijah suggested, Then you will call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord, the God who answers by fire. He is God. Then all the people said, What you say is good. When they called on the name of the God that they serve, the one who brings fire from the sky and falls on the altar wins. No matter how many times the prophets of Baal called on the name of their God, there was no answer. 1 Kings 18.26 says, so they took the bull given them and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. Oh, Baal, answer us, they shouted. But there was no response. No one answered. And they danced around the altar they had made. Because idols are not alive, they can't answer you no matter how many times they're called. God, who we serve, is alive. What happened to Elijah what happened when Elijah called on the name of God? When Elijah called God, God answered him immediately. 1 Kings 18, 37 to 38 say, Answer me, O Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also licked up the water in the trench. Our God is alive. When we call on Him, He hears us and answers us. That is why we must pray to God. Prayer is a conversation with God. To get close to our family members, we have a lot of conversations with them. If we don't converse with them, they're like strangers. Let's say that when you wake up in the morning, you don't say anything to your mom or dad and just have breakfast and go to school or work. When you come back home, you just take a shower and go to sleep. Then your family is like stranger. You must have a lot of conversations to get close. In the same way, we must have a lot of conversations with God through prayer to get close to Him. There are are people who say that they don't have time to pray, but we can pray in our daily life. When I go 
abroad, I pray a lot. When I'm on a plane for 10 hours, I can deeply pray. Even though I can't shout on the plane, I close my eyes and deeply pray. And I can pray well. For more than 60 years during my ministry, I have asked for God's help many times. When I reflect on my life, There is not a single moment that God did answer me. There are prayers that are not answered immediately. There are prayers that are answered gradually. Even though our prayers are not answered, those are still answers from God. What is clear is that when we pray, we can experience the grace of God and we can experience miracles. We must, if we pray every day, We can have our problems solved by the grace of God. Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Through prayers, our sins are forgiven. Through prayer, the devil is driven out. Through prayer, diseases are healed. Through prayer, blessings come. So we must make all our efforts to pray always. Third, there are conversations that we have with our neighbors. In the process of growing up, people influence one another by having conversations with their neighbors. Thus, having conversations with neighbors is important. What we need to be careful on is to carefully accept the seeds of words that are sowed in our hearts by our neighbors. When our, when our neighbors sow bad seeds in our hearts, we shouldn't accept the seeds just as they are. We must distance ourselves from those who speak negative words and who are filled with words of unfaithfulness. It is good to have fellowship with those who speak positive words of faith. In addition, when we speak to our neighbors, we must speak good words. When we sow seeds in, our, in other people's hearts, there are many times when we sow wrong seeds. When we sit and talk about our neighbors, we... Don't usually compliment them or encourage them. When our spoken words leave our mouth, the words don't just disappear until they have come true. Responsibility and consequences follow spoken words. Therefore, we must always sow good seeds in the hearts of our neighbors with the words of courage and encouragement. Proverbs 15.4 says, The tongue that brings healings is a tree of life, but a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. If we sow gentle words, life will overflow in our hearts. If we sow deceitful words, our hearts will break. Proverbs 16.24 says, Pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. If pleasant words are exchanged among married couples and among parents and children, they are like a honeycomb that our hearts will become sweet and they will be healing to the bones. So why don't we try good things? Compliments have amazing power. Compliments turn enemies into allies. Compliments turn... Enemies into benefactors. Giving compliment is a great way to change people. A person who gives compliments well can become a great husband, a great wife, a great parent, a great child, and a great neighbor. Therefore, we must give compliments generously. Fourth, our spoken words are very important because they, they can change and create our circumstances. Those who are saved by believing in Jesus don't use spoken words that they have used before they were saved. They use a new language that saved them. Those from the mouth of those who are saved by believing in Jesus, the words of forgiveness of sins and righteousness come out. The words of healing and the fullness of the Holy Spirit come out. The words that bring the work of miracles that receive healing and health come out. The words uh the blessings a blessings of Abraham and prosperity and the grace of God come out. The words of resurrection, eternal life and heaven come out. The fivefold gospel given by Jesus is the word of those who are saved. Our spoken words are very important because they can change our faith. God has given us the power that determines our faith. That is our spoken word. Proverbs 18.21 says, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. 
to taste the fruit of the tongue is to taste the result of the words that we use with our tongue. We might think the words that we use have nothing to do with us, but this is wrong. Once our spoken words leave our mouth, they begin to work. They don't just disappear. As long as we are alive, our spoken words will work. If we use productive, if we speak productive words following the will of God, productive things will get done. And destructive words will bring destruction. So when we live our lives, we must regard our spoken words importantly. Spoken word is the power of solution that human beings who are created in God's image have. Our spoken words can tremendously change us. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go through yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, what, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Spoken words confessed with our mouth have tremendous power. We must have thoughts that are firm like a rock. We must dream dreams. We must have firm faith. If we make mouth confessions, amazing things will come. A member from our church suffered with cancer. She repented of her sins and committed all things to God, and she hung unto God through prayer. She testified that after she listened to my sermon, she prayed, this cancer that is illegally parked in my body has nothing to do with me. She spoke these words and prayed when she relied on the cross of Jesus and looked herself as if she is completely healed. She was completely healed within eight months. Her doctor was surprised. What is more surprising was that her high blood pressure and diabetes were gone as well. Our mouth confessions have great power. If we speak words by having a fervent heart, the Spirit of God will work according to our words, if we just sit still and don't say anything, the Holy Spirit within us will just sit still. But if, if we open our mouth and begin to speak, the Holy Spirit will bring the miracles of changes in creation according to our words. The Holy Spirit just doesn't The Holy Spirit doesn't just sit still. The Holy Spirit is working right now because I am speaking right now. The Holy Spirit is working right now through my spoken words. Many Christians come to me to receive prayer. When they do so, the Holy Spirit of God speaks to me. Tell them that they, their prayers are answered. So I say, your disease is healed, your problem is healed. Then those words begin to take effect and miracles come. If we confess that our prayers are answered by God, the devil will be afraid of us and the devil will flee. Therefore, we must rely on the word of God. We must pray by opening our mouth and speak positive words. Romans 10, 17 says, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. When we hear the word of God, faith comes, and when we speak with faith, miracles come. Therefore, we must completely fill our hearts with the word of God. We must look to ourselves as if the word of God is coming... to pass, we must make declarations with faith. Then those words will be sowed into our life and bear fruit. We must say, by his wounds, I am healed. By his wounds, I am healed. We must continue to speak the words of healing. Then those will, words will be sowed into your heart. They will bear fruit and the miracle of healing will take place. Romans 8, 2 says, Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Therefore, 
You are no longer in the midst of sin and death. You are already liberated from sin and death. So you can enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along well. I bless you in the name of the Lord that you will clearly know the power of your spoken words and use them well. And I bless you in the name of the Lord that you will live a victorious life every day. Hallelujah! Hallelujah!